everyone, welcome to the McGilly studio. This afternoon I'm going to show you how to make this quick and easy little tote bag and I'll also show you how I made the pattern. Now to make this tote bag you need to have some foam and some fabric for your outside and your lining. For your outside of your fabric you can patchwork a couple of pieces and however you like to, to make it jazz it up. But for the demonstration we're just going to make the plain version like this one. You'll also need a strip of fabric two and a half inches wide times the width of your fabric folded in half right sides together to make your handles. Now I'll we'll make our handles first. To make our handles what you need to do fold it in half, sew across one side, sew all the way down the edge, turn it right side out um, and then thread a bit of foam or bag batting that's a little bit thinner all the way through your handle and then top stitch it along each side. And then you can just set that aside until we're ready to put them on. Now, the pattern for this little bag is quite easy. And when I like to make my patterns, I often like to use manila folders um, and because um, they're nice and easy. But I also like to do things once only and only make half. Because this bag's symmetrical, we can make half at a time. So what we've got here, I've got my little drawing and I'll put a picture of this up with a video as well. Our bag, to make it the way that I did to start with, it is five and a half inches across here by one and three quarters inches. I did a line to that corner and that becomes a quarter of our base of our bag. Then I extended that line out to that point there, which is seven and a half inches from the fold. The top of the bag is 11 inches from the top, a line across there, turn that around and then draw a line across to the other point there. Then from that point to that point, draw a line down and that's my bag. Now here's one that I've cut out already. It's actually the opposite. Let me flip it out so you can see that it matches perfectly for that. So this part here is for the outside of our bag. Our lining we make, but we don't actually take that little part out on the corner. Now, let me get our fabric prepared. Now this piece of fabric, I've ironed it onto the bursal foam, the fusible foam. I'm gonna take my pattern piece, lay it on here. Now these friction pens, they do iron out, but I never like to use them on a seam or something like that so it's gonna be showing on your fabric. So what I do is I like often, and I like using the cardboard because I can trace it out straight onto my fabric. And I'm just gonna make a little indent about a quarter of an inch in and there so I know that I can flip my pattern over, match up those two points and trace it on again. Bit hard tracing it on when you've left a ruler underneath there. And across, back down. So then I've traced my bag on. So now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly cut this out. Now when you cut this out, glasses help. Okay, now cutting into these little corner bits, cut straight in, straight across, and along the edges, and tip out the corner. Flip it around, straight in, straight across. Now that's the outside of our bag ready. Now we want to do is put that right sides together, and we'll fold that down there. Now, before we go to the sewing machine, um, we need to actually mark where we're going to put our handles on our, our bag. So I'm going to un take it undone this way, and I'm just going to mark the halfway point up here. I'm going to do one side at a time. So then I'm going to flip this back over that way, and one handle's going to go there, and one handle's going to go there, if you can see what I've done. Then get the other side, put the two together and just mark where you're going to put the center of your handles on the top edge. Now for your lining, 
When we cut out our lining, we don't actually cut out the corners. So here's one I prepared earlier. So we'll cut that out. And then what we're gonna do for the lining is we're just gonna fold up that bottom part by one and three quarter inches. Okay, you can stretch it out because it does go up slightly so it matches on those edges and we're gonna sew along there. Now when we go to the sewing machine, we're going to sew with the width of the foot as a seam allowance. So you sew all the way down one side of your lining. I don't use pins on something like this because you've cut out your fabric together and it'll sit quite nicely. But sew all the way down your lining and sew that fold over. And stop on the other side of your lining. When you sew it, you can start from the bottom, make sure it's folded over the same amount. You're gonna leave an opening. The more of an opening you leave on this side, the better. So I like to leave an opening that's nearly the whole side so I can turn it out quite quickly and back up to the top. So that's your lining that's finished. We'll just set that aside for a minute with our handles. Now we're gonna do the outside of our bag. Put your foam together, start at the top, make sure the top's together. Width of the foot is your seam allowance and you'll sew all the way down one side. Now this machine, it just absolutely loves going through thick layers, it's so good. Flip it over. And if you want, you can use a walking foot to do this. Then what we're going to do, we'll box out our corners. So fold that flat. Sometimes it has a little mind of it its own, but it'll sit there quite nicely. Give it a, a squ squish it up because the foam's designed to be squished. It doesn't matter if your seam goes from one side to the other and sew across the bottom. Turn it around and do the other corner. Same thing again, match up your edges. Keep it nice and nice and flat and so underneath. Okay, that's the outside of our bag done. Like that, now we're gonna grab our handles. Now our handles, we need to make them the same size. So grab the scissors again. So trim off the, um, I'd call them daggy ends and get rid of them. Slide your handles down and make sure they're exactly the same length. And then cut them in half. Now pin your handles where you've made your little marks, just halfway across each little mark that you did before. Make sure your handle goes flat around to the other little mark that you did before. You don't have to mark the outsides, just mark the center of where the handles went. Turn it around, we'll do the other side. If I could pick up one pin, that would be appropriate, but I'm not. Back around to there. Onto this side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, actually it's better to have the bag turned around the other way. So we're just gonna turn this through. Be careful not to prick yourself with your pins. If you're using a machine that's got a free arm, you can leave it that way. But on this machine, I can't. I want to have my thicker fabric out. And one little hint that I have, if you've got a firm fabric and you've got a fabric that doesn't have any interfacing or lining with it, always have the fabric that's not so firm on the bottom so what your feed dogs can take it along unless you're using a walking foot. So now with the lining, we want to pull the lining up over the outside of the bag. Tuck our handles in. We'll match up the side seams, pull it around, put the pin in. Match up the side seams of the other side. You stick your hand right down inside it and pull it all through. Now your lining will be slightly smaller, so you might find you have to pull it up to match. But give it a stretch across like that. Find your middle 
and then pin it all the way along. Now with this bag, I'm gonna be sewing with my foam on the inside. So I'm gonna put my pins on the inside and I want my lining fabric on the outside because I want my lining fabric to be touching the dog's feet of the machine and my foam is quite stable so it can go under the pressure foot. So like I said a moment ago, if you're actually got something, a fabric that has got a little bit of give in it and a fabric that's a little bit stiffer, always put your stiffer one on top and um, they should feed through quite evenly and you shouldn't get your little pleats and gathers if you um, have the feed, dog, feed, feed dogs helping you. So one more pin, I think. Just near that handle. And put my pins to the inside of all my handles. Last thing I wanna do is sew over a pin. Okay, now. All I need to do now, get this under the pressure foot and see the bag will sit quite nicely around the end of your machine if you don't have a free arm on your machine. Foot down, width of the foot again and just sew all the way around your edge. Just keeping it there and making sure that you stop with your needle down. When you get to your handles, um, I do strongly suggest that you do a double stitch. If you like on your side seams, you can open them up um, and they will sit a little bit flat. It just makes it a little bit easier when you do some top stitching around the top of the bag. So, so to your handles, slide over the top, backwards and forwards. opened up the other side so I'll open up this side now I am hoping my bobbin's not going to run out I didn't check it before I started there we go all the way around that edge that's that part of the sewing done now we've got a big opening on this side so we're going to pull that through the lining seem to struggle a bit with this part but sort of push it through pull it through whatever work whatever works for you use your thumbs but when it gets free on the other side you'll find the bag will just pop out quite nicely put your hands in the middle now if you want you could possibly leave it like that that looks quite nice with the lining over the top but we need do need to fold that down now we need to sew up the side seam where we've pulled that out and the best way that I like to do it, I like to get my fingers inside there and roll up that seam. And I do like to pop a couple of pins in there just to make sure that I'm folding it in correctly and by the correct amount. Sometimes it does like to move and you get stray threads sticking out. So your pins will help you hold that under. And we're just gonna pop that under that edge under the machine. If you really want to be nice and neat, you can slip stitch this closed. But if you sew quite close to your edge, there's no need to slip stitch it. And no one will notice that seam on the edge. Only you will. Okay, now lastly, what we need to do is we need to top stitch around the top. When we do that, we want to fold this down. Pulling that lining down. And pin as you go. You can take this to the ironing board if you, if you like, but the best place is to pin under each handle to start with. And you actually have to really squish that foam down because you're squish, squishing that foam in the seam. And by leaving that foam right to that seam edge, it creates a nice little roll top across the top of your bag. Okay, so once you've got your pins all the way around, 
same thing again on your machine go back and we're going to stitch all the way around this time the width of the foot you can make it a little bit wider if you like um, so it goes over the foam but the width of the foot is just a nice easy distance to go all, all the way around Now on the side, on the corners, just go slowly. You don't want to break a needle at this, this stage of your bag. Or do you want to run out of a bobbin? Reverse when you get back round to the other side. Stop. There's your little tote. Thanks for watching and happy sewing.